smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. I don't think these are the kind of worms we're thinking of, like earthworms. You know, there's all kinds of worms. There's glow worms. There's mealworms. There's all kinds of uh, maggots are called worms. I think in the Bible, when it talks about worms, it's probably most likely talking about maggots. Where the worm, ne- hell is described as a place where the worm never dies. Guess what? Maggots. When there's trash, maggots just keep coming. There's just no end to the maggots. They just keep spreading. Anyway, it was almost like an instantaneous thing that he was smote by the angel because he would not give God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. And we have the last two verses. It says, But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. That's John Mark. I want to talk about the fear of the Lord just for a second. We need to dismiss here directly. But the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of knowledge. And another verse that says the beginning of uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you want wisdom? Do you want knowledge? It starts with fearing God. I don't know how much our culture really fears God. I think it doesn't at all. If we really truly fear God, we would be cautious with the kinds of things we say and do. It's the fear of God that keeps a person from sinning openly. We don't only want to keep God from judging us, but we don't want other people to judge us, right? But I want you to think back about King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel. God judged him when he was prideful in a similar kind of way. You remember what God did to King Nebuchadnezzar? I think it was King Nebuchadnezzar. He took away his mind. What could be more precious than your mental faculties? You lose your mind. You get to go to a loony bin. Actually, King Nebuchadnezzar, it says that he lived with the animals for seven years. His nails grew out. His hair grew like feathers, like a bird's feathers. He looked awful. Seven years he lived as a wild animal. He had the mind of an animal, it says. And then, after seven years, it says, when he came to his senses, when he came to his, when he realized what was going on, he finally woke up. What have you been doing for the last seven years? Are you in a sleep? I hope God hasn't taken your mental faculties or doesn't do that in the future. That is a scary thing. But think about that. God can do that. He will do that for those that act like King Nebuchadnezzar did, prideful, arrogantly. And what King Herod did was to not give God the glory, but he took the glory himself. I'm surprised some people today... With all the glory they're taking, are healing over dead. God is very patient. <laughs> Psalm 111, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise and doeth forever. And Proverbs 1, verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do you feel that strongly about sin? It says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, but also pride, arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. You know, God hates some things. I preached a sermon on that. I'm not going to preach it again today, but God hates some things. And I think we ought to hate those same things too. Proverbs 9.10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. In Proverbs 10.27, the last proverb I'm going to read for you today, says the fear of the Lord prolongeth days. You want to live a long life? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. But it says that the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now, is that an analogy for everybody's life cut short? I don't think so. But it's a general rule. Sometimes that is the case. That doesn't explain some things. It's not meant to. It's a generalization. It is one of the principles that God has. I 
I do want to share with you another uh, verse out of Acts that we already read a couple weeks ago, but in Acts 9.31, it says, Then have the churches rest through all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified in walking in the fear of the Lord. You know, the fear of the Lord is not just an Old Testament thing. It is a New Testament thing. It says they were walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So a few closing thoughts. Philippians 2, 12. Last thought on this uh, fear and trembling, fear of God topic. But Philippians 2, 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. These last two verses in chapter 12 says, But the word of God grew and multiplied. King Herod dies, and the word of God multiplies. You wouldn't think the death of a king would cause the increase of the church. But here he is, he's trying to kill the church. He's trying to kill Peter, and he killed James, a different James. The brother of John. And God judges him. You know, I think it's similar to when Ananias and Sapphira keeled over dead. They lied to God. They lied to the church. And fear came over the church. Here Herod is trying to please the Jews by killing the church. And fear comes over. And people are, the, the word of God rather is growing and multiplying. Paul and uh, Saul rather and Barnabas are going out. They're continuing, they're doing missions work. They're, they're taking John with them. And they're going out. What is it that you need to do? Do you need to wake up? Do you need to be smited by God to wake up to have the chains fall off? I don't want to be. Someone stops me in the middle of the night, I don't want to have issues. I'm not a good person when I get woke up. Ask Cassie. I need a few minutes. Our culture needs a wake-up call. It needs voice. It needs the voice of God. It needs the Word of God. And God calls all of us to somehow, one way or another, all of us to take part in that mission to proclaim the gospel. Do we all have the same mission? No. We all have different parts, just like a body. An eye... The nose, the mouth, they all have different functions. And the church is supposed to work together in the same way. We all have different ways in which we do that. But we do it together. We don't do it separately as Lone Rangers. We're supposed to be doing it together. It is something that God created, not man. You are God's creation. Look at each other. Look at you. Look inward. You are the church. Not me. Not this building. You, God's people, are the church. And you are to be fulfilling all the things that they were doing then, 2,000 years later, we're still doing. Because Jesus hasn't come back yet. And that is the great hope that we have. That when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise up the dead first and then his own people. Are you going to be ready for that great day? The trumpet has not blasted yet. You still have some time. And I wouldn't wait for you to get right with God. The way you get right with God is by calling on his name. If you wait to get cleaned up, you're never going to be ready. You can't do enough cleaning. You know, God says that our righteousness is as filthy rags out of Isaiah. If my righteousness is as filthy rags, then I'm hopeless. And guess what? You are. You're completely hopeless apart from what God did on the cross. It's His work that saves us. It's your belief in what Christ did that saves you. It's your belief in what He did that breaks those chains. So, would you come? Would you be a part of the church. We're not going to have church tonight, but we got church Tuesday morning, Wednesday night. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want those chains to remain off, you need to get plugged into a church. You need to get plugged into a Bible study. You need to get plugged in. And I'll just... I'm, I love the fact that you guys are here on Sunday. Don't get me wrong. But there's so much more. You know, when kids are going swimming, they like to stay in the shallow end. But they can't fully experience all the joys of the other end of the pool if 
they just stay in the shallow end. I'm encouraging you. Come, let's go a little deeper. Let's see what more God can do if we get a little more involved, a little deeper in, uh, in His church. Let's uh, go to song. Let's do that and then we'll uh, break for it.